So according to the Royal Institute of British Architects, or RIBA, more than half of the students who have completed their undergraduate Bachelor of Architecture degree, or Part 1, do not go to complete their postgraduate Part 3, which is a requirement for getting registered as an architect in the UK. And this book highlights 40 stories of people and practices who have expanded the horizon of architecture by questioning what can be considered architecture. Hello friends and welcome to the channel. My name is Amir and I'm a fifth year architecture student at the London School of Architecture. And in this video, I want to introduce you to the book Architects After Architecture, which is edited by Harriet Harris, Rory Hyde and Roberto Mortaccio and published by Routledge. This book is the go-to book for me when I feel deeply limited by architecture and the definition we have given it. The book is divided into two sections of plus, which highlights the work of whom consider themselves to be still practicing within the conventional realm of architecture and beyond, which is where you can find and read about the works of people who consider themselves to be stretching the boundaries of architecture discipline. The people who have studied architecture but found themselves in technology, politics, advocacy, video game, property development, design thinking, art, museums, and more. Now, I want to say that quitting architecture or practicing it in a different unorthodox way doesn't mean that architecture is not enjoyable or it's not good enough. Yes, there are so many challenges along your way of becoming an architect and then actually so many more when you start practicing. There will be a lot of liability and low pay. But the actual fact that so many people have chosen to pursue alternative careers is also that they are usually well equipped with diverse sets of skills, all the way from strategic thinking to problem solving to different crafts and hands-on skills. Architects are usually really good at spotting a problem and trying to come up with different solutions for it. In university, we are usually more open to think about other solutions than just to propose a building as an answer to all problems. But when it comes to practice, we are usually placed in a box, being constrained with the limitations of conventional notion of architecture. This was not a major problem before, but it is becoming one, more and more every single day. As the world faces unprecedented challenges like the climate crisis, the pandemic, the refugee crisis, and you name it. To tackle these major problems, we have now realized that we require a multidisciplinary approach, as there are millions of different sides to each of these threads that we need to tackle. As a result, we can see more and more of architects as well as people from other disciplines to come out of their silos and work collaboratively to deliver the global change which is required to tackle these problems. There is also a great website worth checking called Collaborative Change, link in the description, run by Laura Kinnear and a couple of others, which consists of many case studies of different projects where architects and people in other disciplines work together to deliver change. In the book you also learn about innovative and creative initiatives led by architects such as Proxy Address by Chris Hildry which is my personal favorite project of the book, that addresses socioeconomic issues like homelessness, which is a great precedent for those who want to transit from architecture to dealing with social challenges that have existed for a very long time, but we walk past it every single day. I will make a whole video about this project later, but in short, Proxy Address allocates unused postcodes to the homeless people who need it most to receive social services and apply for jobs, and register for medical care and so on. There are also other interesting people from architecture who have found themselves in companies like Google, like Matt Jones, who is now a principal designer at Google AI. Matt has worked on many fascinating projects, but the project that he worked on as one of his first projects at Google was called Sunroof, which uses satellite imagery and computation to model how much sun any roof is going to get and therefore how much energy it could generate. In the book he talks about the scale difference between architecture and technology and he also talks about how he used his architecture education as a base to bring multiple shiny things from other fields together. In conclusion, there are so many inspiring stories of how architectural knowledge can be applied in multiple fields in different ways and how the notion of architecture can be stretched to embrace new opportunities that allow architects and others to collaboratively work on bigger ideas. In my next videos, I'll discuss how the world's best architectural universities are suggesting a new approach to architecture education that leads to a more multidisciplinary approach to practicing architecture. 
I hope you have enjoyed learning about the broader definition of architecture and getting to hear some of the inspiring stories of people who have used their architecture education and experience to tackle issues at larger scales. So we have a great rest of the day and see you in the next video.